So today, uh, we're going to start looking at using these pen tablets, these Wacom pen tablets. Uh, these are not the only brand that exists, but we've, uh, we've got a whole class set of them, basically. So you want to plug it in. So you want to plug it in, and then uh, let's go over to File New. Guys in the side over here, you need to have a question. The lecture's going on. And then ladies over here as well. We've got the lecture going on now. Remember, if you have any questions, a little quieter, please. So let's start a new document. And we're going to use the usual advanced HTML5 canvas. And um, the width and the height, we'll just leave it as is for the moment. Frame rate 24. Leave that as the default as well. So let's click Create. And then we'll do File Save As. We'll save this to your desktop or flash drive, wherever you'd like. We'll just call it practice. Call this practice with today's date. I remember whenever we come into the lab, uh, we'll probably have to change a few of the defaults of the software. Um, I want to change my workspace. Does anyone remember? Where do I go to change the workspace in Adobe Animate? Window. Window. Good. Essentials. Workspace and then Essentials. Yes. So let's switch over to the Essentials just so that everyone's looking at the same sort of set of tools. Let's go over to Workspace Essentials. I'm going to change my uh, my zoom to fit in window. And then also, remember I mentioned down on the timeline, we might confirm that the timeline is set to standard. So you can click on the little um, icons right there for standard. All right, so um, the, the way you get the best out of this tool, one of the ways is using the, the brush tool. So from the left side, go ahead and select brush, the paint, the classic paintbrush, that's the current name of it. And like I said, on, on my window, this left toolbar is a, is a little truncated. Mine gets cut off right there. So on the left side, what I'm going to do is pull the left edge out a little bit right there so I can see more of the tools. So in my case, I have to stretch it out a little bit like that because we've got some options at the very end here. I've got the brush tool selected, I've got a color, and then at the bottom I've got this little thing that looks like a target uh, or a Google map icon or whatever, and then a little pen. So for me right now, this circular one is active, and if you hover your mouse that says use pressure. So use pressure is turned on for me, and that's one of the reasons you want to use these things, because with regular real paper and pencils and all of that, you can press harder, you can press lighter in the real world. Well, digitally, we have something very similar. So if you don't have that pressure, turn on the pressure. And then we've also got use tilt. So this will be another way for you to make more realistic drawings, because if you have the, uh, the pen perfectly vertical, it's one t sort of brush size and such. And if you have it tilted a little bit, kind of like calligraphy and such. So for the moment, to test out both modes, turn both of those on, use tilt and use pressure. And in my case, uh, the size here, the default is 3. Let's put that on like 10 or something. Change the size of your brush over here to 10. Now we do have keyboard shortcuts and such that we'll look at, but change that over to 10 or so. And now instead of the mouse, well, let's look at how these work. If you notice on the device itself, if it's plugged in, there's a bunch of lights that turn on. And one of them is a little like um, active area corners. So if you try to put the mouse on an area that's not an active corner, nothing happens. If you put your mouse inside of an active area, then it does follow you. So this is different than the mouse where we're used to that. If I move my mouse a little bit to the right 
and then I lift up the mouse because I ran out of the mouse pad space, and then I keep moving it, right? The mouse um, is, is a relative positioning. The mouse is that wherever your mouse is at, you can move it from. But the pen is an absolute position, meaning if I click on the top left, my mouse appears at the top left. If I click on the bottom right, it appears at the bottom right. It's not like I click it and drag it over like a mouse. It's wherever I tap on the active area, it's active. So that's one little difference. With the brush tool, if I start to use this, let's try this. Sign your name. With a very light touch, you get a light uh, small brush and then a little bit of a harder press not too hard it, it's pretty advanced uh, you will see a light or a thin brush okay so this is going to be really useful once I really start to draw like characters and such um, the pressure sensitivity of you get these really cool lines look at that I love that this uh, Thick here, thin here, this curve, like, it's looking real pro. Now, of course, we'll talk about advanced drawing and such. But I'm just kind of freestyling a little bit with these, with this brush tool. You'll also see the options up here. Once you've got the brush selected, you're going to see tool properties. And here it is again, tilt or pressure sensitivity. If you turn those off temporarily, you'll see the difference that all of the lines are perfectly the same thickness. You might want that sometimes. Usually you'll at least want pressure. And as you practice with it, you can see the value also of tilt. You just get sort of slightly different lines. OK, now, the tablets do that, but they've also got a bunch of buttons. Yeah. Now here's the thing. Don't press the button, but if you put your, your finger on a button, the first button, for example, I'm not pressing it, I'm just putting my finger on the button, um, you get a little uh, a, a heads up display, right? So I'm not pressing it yet, but then I just hold my finger on it, I get a pop up. And each of these buttons says something. Now, on my screen, it's kind of small, but it says touch on or off, settings, precision, disabled, shift, control, alt, and what is that last one? Disabled. Okay, so. Those buttons right there do different things. If now I press the first one, I turn on touch mode, and now this whole thing becomes a big old touchpad for my finger, like a tablet. So you can turn that mode on and off with that first button. It's off by default, so now if I have it off, nothing happens. But if I press the first button, touch on, now I can use my, my fingers. And I also can like double tap like a tablet, two fingers. So touch on or off. You might decide which one you like better on that. The second button, if I press it completely, it pops up another heads up display that gives you a little bit more info. And here you can go over to various other settings and turn on all, all of this other stuff. But you won't really have to bother with that. That's the second button. That's the second button. And we've got precision mode. If I press the third one, it turns on this sort of like little target area, which you can move where you need it to be. And the point of that is, when you don't have this precision mode on, you know, your hand moves around some number of pixels. When you turn on the precision mode, it moves like way more precise. Uh, oh, because I, I also have my touch on. Oops, touch off. So it moves way more precise um, in that mode. So sometimes you need to go really detailed and turn it on or off. The fourth button is disabled, but you can make your own macros as well if you go over to the settings. On the bottom, the bottom four buttons, uh, when you saw here the bottom four, Shift, Control, and Alt. So instead of moving my hand over to the keyboard, I've got the very first one, Shift, and then Control, and Alt. So if I was going to draw a perfect square, normally I would hold shift on the keyboard, but I have shift right there on the, on the pen tablet. I can hold shift on the tablet. Sometimes I need to alt-click or control-click. That's the next buttons right there. 
So again, that pops up when you just tap your finger on it, holding it without pressing it. The fourth button doesn't do anything unless you program it. Then we've got the wheel. Okay, the wheel right now on mine, I have the, uh, the little light on the top left. There's four lights here. Uh, top left, top right, bottom left, there's four, which are shown right there. Right now it's on scroll and zoom. So what that does is if I rotate, if I rotate around the, the wheel, depending on what I've got, what particular mode, that wheel does different things, right? There says auto scroll. If I press the center button, it switches over to the next one, which is cycle layers. Press the next one, goes into brush size. I can quickly rotate it to, to change my brush size. If I press it, it goes to the next one, which is rotate. I can rotate the, 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 the page, the canvas. And when I go back to scroll, each of these does a different thing. So if I go over to the brush size, right now it's on brush size 10, but right here now I'm rotating it and I'm at 50, or rotating it back to 1. And that happens when you press the button in the middle to go to the four possible modes right here. So I might have it on brush size and quickly jump between different sizes. So very quickly with that, I can switch. So you'll get the practice of this, of course, in the assignment and uh, how to use it the best way. But we've got all of these macro buttons. We can go to the settings to program our own. And on the pen itself, did you notice on the pen itself, it's got a couple of buttons. So the bottom one is a right click so right on the pen itself if you get used to drawing with it and then with your finger pressing the the button that's doable with practice um, the bottom button vertically like this the bottom button is a right click so sometimes I need to do stuff and then quickly right click and I've got it right there on the pen on the bottom the top button is a double click so it doesn't do anything here but if I uh, press the top button that's a double click so it's double tap whatever those can be reprogrammed as well if you go to the settings. And if you make a mistake in real life with a real pencil, what do you do? Erase it. Digitally, these have an eraser. If you flip it over, eraser. So the point down is, uh, is the brush, and then flipped upside down is the eraser. And then you can go in and erase it. And then quickly jump back to that. And then change my brush size if I've set it to the wheel. And I can just quickly draw something amazing with this. How many of you have ever used a digital pen tablet before? A few people? OK, cool. If you haven't, this is a brand new way to draw. It's way better than the mouse. Although there's a lot of talented people that can use the mouse to make some cool stuff. So. Let's uh, do a little something more concretely, but does this make sense so far? Any questions so far? Everyone on track? Anyone having a little trouble or anything? Okay. Uh, I'm going to do Control A to select all and delete. You can keep it if you want, make a new layer, whatever. I just need an empty space. One thing that I like to do when I'm just doodling is Control A to select all and then delete on the keyboard and it clears the, the layer. But let's do a new layer right here. If you don't have a layer, if you don't have an empty layer, make a layer. What I'd like to do is I'd like to get a little practice in what the assignment will be, which is to, uh, we're going to do some tracing. We're going to look at the assignment in detail in a moment. But the idea is I'm going to provide you a set of 11 possible drawings for you to trace. And that'll be the assignment for this week. Again, I'll talk about the details. There's more details than that. But I want to do the practice of, I want to import a, um, an image to trace and then I want to set myself up because you just don't import it and go there's a little bit of setup and then of course when it's going to be turned in it's actually going to be turned in printed out printed out in color uh, and then just like a proud parent I'll put it up on the refrigerator when you turn it in and um, we need to go through that process on how that works so we should have an empty canvas here 
Uh, we're going to import a graphic, but first you need to copy the graphic. I have it in the network folder. I'm going to minimize. Let's minimize Adobe Animate for a moment and go over to the web design folder. Open up web design folder on the desktop, minimize, animate. In the 125 folder, you need to copy the lesson. Well, you can just do it directly. Inside lesson five, I've got the graphic. So either get the folder or the graphic, but just copy that graphic to your desktop or flash drive or wherever. Yeah, remember, it's this is open for everyone. This is active for everyone, so you need a copy of it. Don't just double click it. Mm -hmm. Don't just drop it in. You need to copy it out of the out of my folder onto your desktop or flash drive. Copy the file called dw.ping. So dw dw.ping. Copy that to the desktop. And then inside of uh, Adobe Animate, we'll do File Import to Stage. That graphic that you got out of the folder, the network folder, now we're going to import it. So File Import to Stage. Keyboard shortcut Control R. And I'm going to select DW and paste it in. here is larger than the canvas. So we can do a couple of things. We can resize the image to fit on the canvas, or we can resize the canvas to fit the image. Let's, uh, let's, do, let's remind you of how to do the resize. <clears throat> resize is just the free transform tool. We're not going to do it, but remember, the free transform tool, um, keyboard shortcut Q, lets you select your item and then shrink it down. OK, I don't want to shrink it. But that's one thing we could do. Instead of shrinking the graphic, I want to shrink the can or grow the canvas. And one way to do this is if you go to your selection tool and click on an empty area of your project, you should get the properties of the document. And here we have the size. OK, you want to change the size. But I don't know the size of my graphic. No problem. Adobe Animate does if you press Match Contents. So with your selection tool, select the, the document. In the properties, click Match Contents. And then now that, resize the image, uh, resize the, the canvas project over to the right dimensions. OK, so on the layers, this is my layer one. This is um, this is just named layer one. Let's call it uh, tracing. Well, actually, let's do it this way. Uh, before we rename it, let's right click it and go to properties. We've seen that you can just double click it and rename it. Great. We can see that we can hide it, whatever, lock it, whatever. There's a bunch of other kind of like extra moods and stuff which you find when you right click and under properties. That's on your layer one, right click it, select properties. And here's another spot where here's another spot where you can rename it, where you can lock it, where you can fade it out. That might be useful when I do my tracing. If the image is too visible, I can go here to right click properties and select opacity 50 so it's less visible. And then, of course, invisible. Then we've got normal mask, etc. folder. Let's change this to have a new name called tracing and guide. I'll explain that in a moment. And visibility 50. So the original colors are too bright, and when I start tracing it, I'm going to maybe get lost on some places. So opacity 50. A guide will be that when you publish it, it won't it won't publish. 
it's just visible in Adobe Animate, but when you publish it, when you export it and such, guides um, do, not, uh, do not export. So we got a name, we got 50% guide, click OK. So it fades out a little bit. Lock the layer. Notice the icon also changed over here. Very few people nowadays know what this is. What's this icon? Anyone know this icon? Here? Square? Oh, God. You do, yes. It's a, it's, a, it's a T square in the world of graphic design. They don't even exist anymore. It's not a hammer. <laughs> I think it's a T square hole. Okay, okay, who? Anyway, let's make a new layer and um, let's make a new layer and call it my drawing. So this is this is a little bit of setup that you need to do when you do this assignment in that you're going to import a graphic. Again, we'll go with the details of the assignment a little later. You're going to import a graphic. You're going to set up your tracing layer so that it doesn't interfere with your main drawing. And you're going to need a layer to do your drawing. And then uh, we'll, we'll get ready to, to use it. So right now that I'm zoomed out, when I'm zoomed out that far and I have my, my brush, which again I'll set maybe to 10 size, this is the interesting thing about Adobe Animate. Again, it's a vector-based drawing program. It's mathematically based. And that shows up in a variety of ways. Like when I'm zoomed out like this, in my case, I'm 57%. When I'm zoomed out and I kind of start to like draw on top of it, the line looks a certain way. But when I'm zoomed in, if I zoom into like 200%, the line is also different. I didn't change my size of my brush at all, it's still set to 10. When I'm zoomed in more, the brush is inherently bigger. And when I zoom out, the brush is smaller. So it's just something to be aware of. So when I zoom out, the brush is very thin, and then when I zoom in, it's also thin. I mean, it's then thicker. So a quick way to zoom in and out on the keyboard, control, and then plus and minus. So sometimes I need to be zoomed out and sometimes zoomed in, so control plus and minus on the keyboard. There is a way to do it also on the pen tablet. It's kind of advanced. So watch this. Only from the pen tablet, right? We've got the little scroll wheel. And I had it on brush. If I switch over to auto scroll, right, the first little circle, the little light. If I put it on auto scroll, well, OK, I scroll up and down, whatever. But then if I hold control and scroll, I can zoom in on this thing. Control, okay, we've got uh, shift alt control and then scroll. So the, the, the one with the little bump. If you hold down that one, the second button at the bottom, and then scroll wheel, you can scroll in and out with the scroll wheel. It's hard to demo it, but there it is right there. So you never have to touch the keyboard if you know the, the tricks. And that is that I've jumped over to the first uh, lighted dot, and then holding control button, and then scroll wheel. And I can zoom around. And then scroll up and down. And then I might put it back to my brush size. Now when I'm zooming in and out sometimes, I'm zoomed into the wrong place on the, uh, on the screen. So with the space bar, 
I temporarily turn into this hand icon, which then I can click and drag with the with the brush. So we have a lot of like a lot of things to learn about just the tools before we get too advanced. We have to zoom in, zoom out, position ourselves, think about brush sizes and so forth. And in the beginning, it's too much to remember, but as you practice it, you'll start to remember it. What I use all the time is that space bar trick where I hold down the space bar and then I reposition myself so that I can draw the next part. Space bar, drag over here, next part, space bar, etc. I don't use as much as I could the scroll wheel. I kind of forget about it. Um, but with the scroll wheel, again, you can change the size of your brush very easily. So make that smaller. Or spin it, make it larger. Um, I, I don't feel it's as precise as it could be. Like when I try to spin it, I think sometimes it spins too fast. But there's probably a, a way to slow it down or whatever. And so we can just have these different sizes. Now, for to, to try to draw something here, here's what I would do. Now, I also forget to do like the rotate and stuff, and I'm usually rotating my body instead of the canvas. I just got used to that. But let's say I'm starting to draw this character here. So um, I know a lot of people are going to start to like trace it like this and move like really slowly. I got to get it perfect. I wouldn't worry about getting it perfect in the beginning um, because we have a lot of ways to fix our drawings. Like sometimes what I like to do is, what if I just make it a curve like that because my hand was like naturally that direction and then I make a curve like in this direction. Well, obviously I, I drew too much over here. I can get back the eraser, maybe erase that bottom part right there and I'll show you other advanced ways. But sometimes this works better instead of trying to go like this, like this, and then like this, and like this. For me, the way I learned to draw it in the, these broad directions that my hand naturally goes in, that was very natural for me to draw that. And then I got here, and then I drew that, and then I got the original. Again, you're not going to, I missed two pixels here. That's not going to hurt you greatly. But I'm getting that curve where then I can go back in and refine it. If you want to do like, I got to go perfectly one stroke, fine, you can do that. And then get your hand, get ready to have your hand at control Z all day long because you're going to draw a line that you don't like, control Z. Try it again, I don't like it, control Z. I don't like it, draw it again. No. You can do it loose like this and then I'll go in and I can zoom in. That's my aquifer vector. <laughs> yeah. I can, I can zoom in and then later, um, and then later I can, um, maybe after I draw the whole thing and I've got all of these like leftover things, then I can go in and smooth them out. I could do it right now. I might be obsessive right now. It's not perfect. Again, however you want to work. Maybe just draw the whole thing freehand. There's a lot of bad stuff I want to fix. Come back to it on the second pass. You don't have to do it all perfectly right now. So I'll leave that for later. And then like over here, this part of the bill, something like that. And then over here, something like that. So I'm fine with this at the moment because later on I can smooth it. This is again vector drawing. You have the ability to further refine the lines and such. So try for a moment. Try for a moment to draw his bill the orange thing. Try to draw the bill for a moment, and I'll show you some techniques on how to fix it up in just a moment. So try that. Try the mouth first for a moment, and then we'll go on in just a moment. If you need any help, call us over. Just try to draw the mouth for the moment.
So in my case, I was starting to draw the mouth, uh, and there's cleanup I need to do, of course. But let me show you some things that'll make your life so easy. Um, this, if I go back to the selection tool, and I click one time on one of the lines that I've drawn, it's showing that it's selecting everything because everything's touching. As long as there's a line that's touching, it gets selected. If I had drawn this part of the mouth without it touching, and I click here, it would not have selected that. So as long as things are touching, when you click one time, it selects. Okay, that's useful. Um, and again, if it's a different color, it's not going to select. So this is, you know, one shade of red. If I just change it slightly 1%, it is a different shade, and therefore, one shade of red next to another shade of red, if they touch, they're not actually combining or anything. So be aware of the colors. I've also started to draw it in red, but eventually I want the edges to be black. I can change that pretty easily later. I'll show you that a little bit later. But here's what I was going to say about making things easier. As I'm drawing this stuff, maybe my lines aren't as smooth as I would like them to be. Here's a trick you can do. So if you select your lines with the selection tool, we have options over here, shape options, straighten and smoothen. So if I press smoothen one time, I'll see a slight change in my curves. They get a little smoother. If I press smoothen again, it smooths it even more. And I keep pressing it multiple times and it gets even smoother, but at a point it's too smooth. But look at that, I love how that did that there. Look at that cool line right there. But it was too much for the rest, so maybe I'll undo it or just redraw the parts that, are, that got too smoothened. Now be careful, because every time you press smooth and you don't like it, you, have to pr you press undo, and then I, ha I did it like 10 times, so I have to undo a lot. And the opposite is straighten. It wouldn't make sense to straighten these lines, but just to see what it looks like, I'll press straighten. And yeah, he's becoming robotic. So I want to keep it on smooth, although that line got kind of okay. So what I'm saying here is that you can start your drawing, and if like your result is a little jittery and you don't love it, try selecting the drawing, click smoothen once, maybe twice, and see how it smooths it. 
I would do that, however, after you've drawn the whole thing, so it's consistent. If I smooth out the mouth now, and then draw something else, and then when I select, and it selects the mouth again, and I'm smoothing some, the head out, but then the mouth gets smoothed as well. So this smoothen or straighten trick, I would do it at the end after you finish drawing everything, so that it's all consistently smooth. If you hide your tracing layer for a moment, it's a, it's a good idea to hide it once in a while, just to see how you're doing, even though it's transparent. Right, hide it for a moment, see how it's looking. And uh, oh, I never, never connected that. And OK, I'll, I got some work for it a little bit later. But think about turning on and off your tracing layer once in a while. That reminds me why I didn't draw the tongue. You know, I was drawing the, the face, but then I forgot the tongue, so I can draw that in. So, we're not going to draw the whole thing together, but at the moment, let's, let's draw the, the head together, because then we'll talk about colorization and such. So, I'm going to give you a few moments. Draw the whole head. You don't have to do the body yet. Draw the whole head, and I'll check in with you in a moment to talk about then colorization. So give that a shot for a moment. Call us over if you need help. Remember, we are still in the lecture. It's not a chat time just yet. So if you need any help, call us over. And if you're done, well, remain quiet until your classmates catch up. And we will do the, we'll draw the rest of the head in, in a moment. Don't mention that yet. Did everyone get a chance to sign in on the sign-in sheet today?
So most people have the head finished. If you're not quite there, that's okay. You'll get there in a moment. But let me mention now a few things. Uh, the assignment is going to be that you're going to um, draw one of the drawings or trace one of the drawings that I provide you. Um, you it also needs to be colorized. So uh, let's talk a little bit about colorization. And we're only going to work on the flat colorization. If you want to add gradients or other, advan other advanced coloring, you could. But remember, check the requirements of the rubric. If you didn't do the minimum part of it, well, the extra stuff doesn't compensate for it. Remember, check the requirements of the assignment. But let's say at this point, I wanted to think about coloring the character. Now, it's not done, but I've got a part of it that I can work with. One of the things I might want to do is, well, I, without thinking, I started to draw it with red, with a red brush, but I want a black edge. I want the classic, you know, black lines. So that's very easy to fix. And if you notice, I'm also in a mode where my tools and stuff get hidden so that I can focus on the, on the drawing. That might be useful for you. If you press F4 on the keyboard, you can turn on and off all the panels, or most of the panels. Uh, you have nice big monitor, so it might not matter. But on mine, sometimes I'll turn off my panels. That's F4 on the keyboard. OK, well, what I want to do is change the, um, change the colors. I started to draw it with red, but I needed black. And instead, I want black. So. I want to select everything, and there's a couple of ways to do it. I can press Control A on the keyboard, or I can click the keyframe of the layer, and that also selects everything. If you click the keyframe, you see how that selected everything. And then with the Select tool, I can do Control A to select everything. I can click the keyframe to select everything. I can try to click or double click on the line and select everything. But again, if a line is not touching, it won't select it. I want to select everything. And then so what I can do here is now the color style fill. Instead of this being red, I can go to any other color. And I can get a preview of it even before I select the color. So control A to select all and then fill color. Pick any colors. So I drew it a certain way and then pretty easily I changed it to something else. And now that I've kind of drawn more of it, that's where I might want to select it and then hit the smooth, the smoothen tool, or straighten as necessary. And to kind of think about it more advanced, if I control A for everything, and I click smoothen, everything will smoothen, of course. But if I select just a piece, if I select just a piece, I use my selection tool to only select the, the feathers on this cheek right here. I need a little selection here. That, I can micro-target it with smoothing or straightening as well. So I can use the square selection tool, click and drag a square. I can use the uh, polygon tool to make a selection that's not a square. 
So with the polygon selection tool, I can select all of that part and then say, okay, smooth and only that. And then I've got the freehand lasso. If you click and hold it, lasso. So you can make you know curves instead of straight lines. So I want to select this part plus this part plus this part plus this part. Free, uh, with the freehand lasso tool and then just smoothen that. So smoothing can be applied to anything that's selected. You can select the whole thing, hit it with smooth. Select little parts and hit it with smooth. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about actually coloring it. With the paint bucket tool, that's the main tool, you can select the fill color there or there, and then just drop it into an area. The catch is that the area must be closed. So if I select a color, just to show you the color, I'm going to go with blue. Um, and then I click it right here. I'm trying to click inside of a, of a spot to fill, and it's not filling with color. If I click over here, that fills with color. But actually too much, I was trying to fill in the mouth, or the inside of the mouth. But what happened was, there's a gap. You have to have closed shapes, and I didn't even notice that until I dropped my color in there. So if I undo that and zoom in, yeah, there's a gap. You know, those three pixels or whatever they are was enough of a gap that it didn't fill in. You can sort of um, fix this in a couple of ways. I'm trying to fill in only the mouth, but then there's a gap there, so I can go back to my brush tool and draw the, the fill, draw the part that needs to be filled in. Or what I could do, because this is vector-based drawing, um, what I could do is force the various drawing pieces to connect with each other. So watch this. If I um, if I, with my selection tool, go to the edge, I can still move the edges of the drawing and make them touch, and then now it's connected. Now it's a solid shape. So with the selection tool, go to the edge and make the edge close. So sometimes what might be valuable is to go in where like it didn't close, like, oh, I saw that when I zoomed in. There is a, uh, a spot that I need to close. So one way to do this, I'll show you a few more, is to get that selection tool and just drag the edge so that you make sure they touch and close. So now that that's got an edge there. That's good. And now I see when I was trying to fill in the mask, there was that that wasn't closed. Okay, well, instead of going to every single little piece and making sure that they all touch, that's why sometimes I do kind of overlap because then I know that they'll touch, but then obviously there I didn't find that. And right here I, I didn't notice that either. Well, there is a mode of the paint bucket that might save you more effort. It's sort of either or. What do you want to do? Do you want to go back to the brush tool and finish drawing it? Do you want to grab the edge with the selection tool and make it touch? Or do you want to use the paint bucket mode right here? When you've got the paint bucket mode, there's a mode right here about what gap size is acceptable. And the default is right there. Don't close gaps. So that means you have to make sure everything that you've drawn has no gaps. That's the default. You can say, if there's a little gap, fill it in for me. Bigger gap, biggest gap. So be aware of that. So let me try this. I was about to try to fill in the mask color right here with the paint bucket. And when I click, it doesn't fill in because there's a little gap. If I switch over to the small gap, will it close it for me? Yep, that was enough right there. There's technically a little gap right there. But because I selected those little gaps, it, did it. it might be useful to have it 
on the largest gap that should work fine as well when there's even larger gaps now how large is large well I guess that's that answers that that's a huge gap right there and it filled it for me the largest gap I may or may not want that and it made a weird result over here have to fill that color in and then the eye colors are to spill out over here so you can decide what kind of mode you like on these things Usually just the littlest gap is fine. So this is what I've got so far. There's still, it still has a way to go. Um, I need to fix some edges, delete some things, fill in colors, and so forth. But let's say for our intro lecture, we'll, we'll end the intro lecture in a moment, we'll take a break, uh, and then after the break we'll, we'll look at uh, one more thing. But questions so far in general? How do you, raise your hand if you like the, the Wacom pens. Okay, uh, raise your hand if you want to take one home. Okay, um, we cannot do that, sorry. You can only use them in the class. So during class time, you'll be able to check it out if you want, during lab times. And uh, after lab, what's our official name for like the tutoring time? Uh, tutoring time? Tutoring time? You mean our lab hours? Well, we've got, we got, we got, a, we've got official lab in here, remember, but then there's lab outside. Um, just Open lab. Open lab, okay. <laughs> so we have the lab time in class, which is, you know, usually the last half hour or so. Uh, yeah, usually until so, about 4.30. And, and then, then we've got the uh, then we've got the open lab hours with Angie and Alex with 4.30 to 6. And then on Fridays from 11 to 3. So there'll be plenty of time to work with these. You'll just need to check it out with, a, uh, with an ID and such. So let's take our first break. It's just about 2.10. Let's take a break until 2.20. And then when we come back, we'll do a little bit more, and then you have plenty of time to work because this week's assignment is to use these and to create something with these tablets. You don't have a discussion this week, you just have an assignment. So we'll be back in about 10 minutes.